Hello, you're on Public Spot, and this is DevScoops, a rapid show and tell on tools and practices in cloud technology in general. So if this tickles your fancy, hit the subscribe button. So let's get into it. I will be doing a show and tell on things to keep in mind when building simple Docker configuration files. Every line item in a Docker configuration file that involves doing something is considered a cacheable step. Docker stores some information about this step and references them each time a Docker build is run. Docker does this to help with making the build run faster by going back to the cache. Let's have a look at this simple Docker configuration file. The eight explicit steps which you can see from the configuration file are the lines that start with from, work dir, env, copy, and run. Some of these directives are declarative. These are the ones that start with env, which means some values are being set and it does not really involve telling Docker to do something. And so if we remove all these declarative steps, we are left with four steps that can be cached. And now let me head to my terminal and let's run Docker build. The Docker build is done and it ran for about 100 seconds with step four taking the longest time. However, if I rerun this Docker build, Notice that the build ran significantly faster, and this is because of the cached steps, which is also specified in the console log. When I first run a Docker build, Docker checks its cache for any information on the step that I'm running. If the step has not been run before, it will run the step. And when the step is successful, it will store some information about this step in the cache. And so when I rerun my Docker build, Docker pulled that information from cache and the step was not rerun. What if I start reshuffling the cacheable steps around? Now let me switch to my VS Code terminal and rerun my Docker build. Although this build failed, notice that step 3 is being run again. When running Docker build, Docker will attempt to compare the details of a step against what it has previously cached. And because step 3 details has changed, it reran the step. And because this step failed, the previous successful build step still sits in the cache, which means if I revert my change and rerun my Docker build, the build finished quickly using the cache. Here is another interesting part. Sometimes we can be a little bit picky in the way the lines are written. I'm not going to make changes to what the step does, but I only want to separate these long lines for readability. If I go back to my VS Code terminal and rerun my Docker build, notice that step four has been run again, even for a very simple formatting change. So be mindful of this. This next part that I will show you hopefully will help when arranging the steps and segmenting your Docker configuration files. If I make a change to one of the steps inside my Docker configuration file, all subsequent steps will be rerun. So let's see this in action. If I make a change to my requirements.txt file, this will trigger a change on my copy step, which is on line 10. So let me open my requirements.txt file and make some changes. And now let me head to my VS Code terminal and rerun my Docker build. Although I have not made any changes to step 4, it was rerun because step 3, which is a preceding step, has changed. Now let me head back to my code. So let's look at this particular step. This step involves several installations. It installs the basic operating system level libraries required to make the application run. And then we have the steps to install the programming language libraries via the pip install. So what I will do is separate my OS library installations from my application library installations, and it will look like this. I can then move the step at line 10 to be a preceding step to my application library installation. With this change, I now have one extra cacheable step to run. So let me switch back to my VS Code terminal and rerun my Docker build. Notice that the step that used to run for about 70 seconds has now been broken down into two steps that run for 38 and 41 seconds. If I switch back to my code and open my requirements.txt file and make a change on this file and rerun my build, I've managed to shave off the time spent on installing my operating system libraries, which is how my Docker configuration file was set up previously. And that's it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Until next time. See ya.